Okay, this just arrived on the porch. It's the Future Model Edge 540T, and it's a different type of hybrid. It actually has a uh, polypropylene skin material on it. So uh, let's have a look at it. Here's all the parts out of the box. I got this from Banggood, and it took about a week to get here. It was 84 bucks shipped. Not too bad. The instructions are in Chinese, but fortunately, um, GrooveJet on RC Groups and his friend Knack, they converted all of this into English. So a big thanks to those guys for doing this. Here's the future model wing compared to the Skywing Edge, and uh, you can see that uh, the shape is actually a little different. Wingspan is about an inch greater on the future model, but it's also more tapered on the end, as you can see right here. And looking at it this way, you can see that the uh, thickness is about uh, one eighth of an inch thinner. It's about one inch actually on the future model, and it tapers. It's much thinner out on the end, so that should reduce drag a little bit. Might lose some lift too though. And the elevator has about the same dimensions, also the rudder. But uh, if you look at this material, you'll see just how much smoother this uh, polypropylene is. Kind of almost like a regular balsa playing with uh, monocoque. The future model uh, fuselage is the same length, but it is a little bit narrower. What's really interesting is it's extremely rigid trying to twist it compared to the uh, Skywing version. And the same thing goes for the wing. It's uh, much more rigid compared to the uh, Skywing. If you try to twist it, there's just almost no twist at all. Here's the electronics I'm going to use. Uh, Corona 939MG. Going to put the uh, Power HD on the elevator. Puts out a little more torque. And it's just a really good servo anyway. A YEP 30 amp ESC. So we start with the uh, elevator and rudder servos. The elevator servos in and the rudder servo. And the wires are pulled through them. And I pulled the servo wires through using this tool right down here. This is just a little reaching tool. You depress it like that. And then you can grab the servo wires and pull it through real easy. Then we install the landing gear wire. The wood blocks in place. Push it down into that slot. That went in pretty easy. They say to use a CA, but I'm going to use a little drop of goop just to secure it. And that way I can remove it if I ever have to. Now we slide the wing into the fuselage. It's a very tight fit, so I had to feed it kind of slow, but uh, that's a good thing. Then we make sure that the distance from the uh, right wing tip to the back of the fuselage on the right side is equal to the uh, left side. And we just wiggle the wing until we get it nice and perpendicular to the fuselage like that. Now we install the elevator into the fuselage, and we flip it over upside down, and feed it in. And we start it in like this, slide it in all the way. And once it's in all the way, we just flip it over. And then we push the horizontal stabilizer in. Then we install the hinges back into the uh, horizontal stabilizer, like that. Now we measure on the right side and the left side. Make sure those measurements are equal. And then I'm going to go ahead and glue the uh, tail and the wing on. I went ahead and used goop on the uh, wing. And I used uh, foam safe CA on the horizontal stabilizer as well as the uh, hinges for the elevator because there is Depron sandwich inside there. So, And next we'll go ahead and install the uh, control horns on the elevator, rudder, and elevator. I'm going to use a uh, 30 minute epoxy. And the elevator and rudder uh, both have a, a little plate on the back here. The instructions include some uh, flat stock carbon fiber to beef up the motor box. It's optional, but uh, definitely something anybody should do if you're going to do some serious aerobatics with this plane. Use 30 minute epoxy for that. Next we install the tail wheel assembly onto the rudder and we make sure that piece of wood there can swivel back and forth. And I used a pin here just to uh, kind of ream that hole out a little bit so that that wire can fit in there. The tail wheel assembly is glued with epoxy. And next we glue the aileron hinges in on both sides. I'm going to let that uh, soak in overnight. And I've also got the elevator hinge glued in using uh, foam safe CA. And the wheels go on next and we just tighten up the collar with a uh, little Allen wrench here. Next we'll go ahead and make up our push rods and we use these Z-bends and these carbon fiber rods here. And uh, it's really important to use the sandpaper here and uh, sand the Z-band real well as well as a carbon fiber rod. And then I just use uh, thin CA to go ahead and glue it and uh, put the heat shrink uh, wrap on there and tighten it up with heat. 
Z bends are tacked on with just a, about a drop of super glue and uh, let that set up and then we'll go ahead and uh, put the uh, heat shrink on there. And the push rods are completed. Heat shrink is shrunk. The rudder hinges are glued now and we can go ahead and glue in this uh, tail wheel support piece. I'm putting a Turnigy Aero Drive uh, motor on there until my uh, Sunny Sky arrives. And I've got a 30 amp ESC, yep ESC mounted right behind there. And the receiver is in. All the servos are hooked up. Okay, now I take the transmitter and I center the trim for the, uh, the rudder and the aileron and the elevator. Make sure they're all centered perfectly. Then I go into the servo setup function and then sub trim and then one by one I select each of the uh, controls and put it at zero so there is no sub trim then I go back and I select the uh, travel and I'm setting them all to 125 percent that's just a starting point we can adjust it later Okay, the transmitter is uh, bound up to the receiver, and we'll go ahead and uh, turn it on, and that will center all the servos. And I check the motor rotation. Looks good. Okay, I'm starting with the right aileron servo, and I take the servo arm and put it back on to the servo, and I try and get it as close to 90 degrees right in here as I can. Um, because it's splined, it's not always possible to get it perfectly 90 degrees, but actually this looks pretty much dead on. And uh, on the ones where it doesn't come out to 90 degrees, let's say it's uh, 85 or something like that, we go in and we take our uh, sub trim on the servo, and we'll adjust it until we get this 90 degree angle right here. So this looks real good on uh, the first one. We'll go ahead and do the left one now. Okay, now I've got the left aileron arm on the servo. It's as close to 90 degrees as I can get it, but it's off a little bit. Maybe it's 85 or something. So now I go into the uh, sub trim menu right here, and I'm gonna go ahead and adjust that until I get my 90 degrees. Okay, so I go over here. And I just keep going in that direction until I get 90 degrees. It's getting pretty close. Let's say that's about right. And I'll go ahead and lock that in. And now I can go ahead and adjust the push rod onto the uh, servo arm here. And I just do that when I get it perfectly centered. I'll go ahead and tighten up the uh, Allen wrench there, the Allen set screw. Okay, the ailerons appear to be traveling about the same amount up and down. Now I can go ahead and adjust the travel. So I had the travel preset at 125%, and it's giving me that amount of movement up and down. I've got a little more I can go there. If you look at the uh, actual cutout on the hinge line, I'd like to increase that a little bit more and see what we can get. Okay, I've got travel selected on the left aileron, and we'll go ahead and increase that. Let's try about 145. I think it's going to take quite a bit to get where I want it. Okay, I'll give that a try. Yeah, that's real good. And I'll go ahead and do that on the uh, right aileron as well. I like the travel up above 125%. It just gives you a lot more torque and a lot more resolution on the, uh, on the stick, on the transmitter. So that looks good. Okay, both ailerons are adjusted on the travel to 145%. Looks good, about equal travel in both directions. So if I'd gone all the way to 150% and I still didn't have the travel I wanted, what I would do is take this set screw, move it further out on the arm, which would give me more travel. And uh, then I would go back in and adjust the, uh, the travel adjustment until I got it to exactly where I wanted it. Okay, now we're going to go ahead and do the elevator servo. So I've got the arm on the push rod. Okay, and then I'll go ahead and adjust the sub trim to get it exactly at 90 degrees. Okay, that's probably about 85 degrees again, and I'm going to go ahead and adjust the sub trim and get it right to 90. Okay, I adjusted the elevator sub trim. 
Yeah, and that looks pretty good. It's about 90 degrees right there. Tighten that up. Good. So the elevator looks good, but as you can see, it's going in the wrong direction. It's going down when it should be going up. So we'll just go into the transmitter and reverse it. Okay, we go from sub trim to reverse. Select reverse. There's the elevator right there. Just go in and switch that. And now we should be okay. Yeah, now it's going the right direction. Great, now we can do our travel. And we'll switch it over to travel. And I'll go ahead and adjust it. Okay, ended up with 115% down and 120% up adjustment. And that looks pretty good. I like it right up against the stops. Full travel, but not binding. That's ah, going to be great. The rudder servo is uh, set up and adjusted, and the travel is set up with left and right. Next thing I like to do is put a little dab of goop right here in the back of these threads here to keep that from backing out, uh, which could cause disaster. So that looks pretty good. You can still back that off if you need to, but it won't uh, fall off on its own. And the same thing in the wheel set screws, that can keep your wheel from falling off, and the main wheels also. And I put larger uh, main wheels on here so I can fly on grass a little easier. And next we glue the landing gear pants on. And I've got these clamps and uh, everything is glued up with goop. Do this one next. Okay, we've got the uh, side force generators on the end of each wing. And uh, the wheel pants are uh, clamped in place, so that's all setting up. Okay, the battery is installed now. And I've got a strap to hold it in as well as some Velcro. And uh, tried three different batteries, a 1000 that's in there right now, and here's the CG point right over here. And that seems to balance out just perfect right there. 1300 balances real good too. Tried a 1500, but uh, 1500, uh, the CG is about a half inch forward and a little too far forward for me. Okay, so this is the completed plane and the weight is uh, 590 empty without a battery. And the weight with a 1,000 uh, milligram battery is uh, 690, and with a 1,300, which is a good choice also, it's uh, oh, about 705, 705 grams. So that's pretty good. And we'll go up and uh, maiden this thing now.